I'm Scott Brusaw. We're sitting in the electronics lab of Solar Roadways here in Sagal, Idaho. I'm going to show you a PowerPoint presentation we finished about an hour ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going to be our guinea pigs. you got thousands and thousands of miles of unused, you know, these roads are collecting heat anyways. This thing collects the power and it stores it. There's 25,000 square miles roughly as of 1990 or 2003 in the lower 48 states. If we covered that with solar panels as just a 15% efficiency, we produce more electricity than this country uses and three times more electricity than we use on an annual basis. And that's almost enough to power the entire world. The history of the solar roadways, you would ask me about uh, what I'm doing in Idaho. It actually goes back to 1961 when I met my wife. And we were three and four years old at the time. When we were kids, we had slot cars, HO track cars. And I always thought it'd be neat as a kid to have electrified roads. So then kids can drive on if you have a slot. That was my brain idea back when I was probably six. Years later, we got married and we kept hearing about global warming. Never paid a whole lot of attention to it. It just kind of registered in the back and I kept thinking, somebody's gonna fix this. Why isn't anybody fixing? I'm not hearing any solutions at all. So we started looking into it. We got Al Gore's movie, the book, and Julie asked me once, she says, can't you take your electric roads and make them out of solar panels? And at first I laughed. I said, you can't drive on a solar panel. But then I started thinking about it. I said, you could build a frame the solar panel would fit inside and drive on it. So I started checking into it. That's how we got where we're at today. It's actually a 32 by 32 array of solar cans, something about the size of a Campbell soup can. And inside here is your solar collector, your LEDs, yellow and white LEDs to paint the lines from beneath, and your electronics and your storage, a storage capacity to store the power. Now what this road does, what you saw there, is it lights it up from underneath like a, like a runway. There's no guessing where that shoulder is. You're right, you, it's like playing a video game, you're driving right down the center. I went to the University of Dayton where I received a master's degree in electrical engineering and they sent me the quarterly alumni newspaper and said they are now the number three materials research lab in the nation. So this past February I went back and talked to them about the top layer, which would have to be glass. They said, yeah, they can make that. They said it might take years, might take millions of dollars, but you can make anything out of glass. And I gave them the specs. I said, you know, we got to have, uh, it's got to be, have the same traction as asphalt, has to be strong enough to support a fully loaded semi truck, locking them up at 80 miles an hour, has to be shatterproof, fireproof, transparent enough to allow the sunlight through, but not to allow the glare back into the driver's eyes. I gave them all these specs. They didn't even bat an eye. I said, yeah, we can do that. This is an older drawing showing how the electricity and the phone and everything runs actually through the road panels. You can power your street lamps, your street lights, everything from the road itself. Your whole road is an electric grid. It becomes, it replaces all your power poles. So we've got an aging infrastructure right now. I heard where the average poles out there are about 42 years old. They're not supposed to last that long. So we've got to redo all that anyways. So along comes the solar road where you're connecting these things together and it becomes your grid. It delivers the power right to your front door along with cable TV, high-speed internet access, your telephone, everything right there. This is a bird's eye view where you're, you've got a restaurant here and a grocery store. Their parking lots would provide their power along with the whole solar grid. Homes the same way are connected by their driveways. We looked up on the internet how, how much an asphalt road costs. And our best number we came up with was $16 a square foot. And that's based on a road that's designed to last seven years. So if we can make road panels last 21 years, and there's nothing in it that can't last that long, then we can multiply that $16 a square foot by three, come in at $48 a square foot, and still break even. Now that doesn't include what the electricity you get back out of it. Based on that, a solar road panel, my target price is about $10,000 a panel. The, the technology behind it has already been done to death. I'm just taking a lot of different technologies, making something new out of it. It's not, it's not space age stuff, it really isn't, except for that glass sheet that hasn't been made yet. But they tell me it's, it's not a problem. The problem is gonna be getting the Department of Transportation, the Department of Energy, the Department of Homeland Security, all these departments to agree to change their specs and their regulations and work together. Because now who's gonna be in control of the road now? Who's gonna charge the electricity? Who's gonna manufacture it? Who's gonna install it? All that has to be changed. We're going to get rid of nuclear power plant plants. We're going to get rid of coal-fired power plants. And all the money, this thing's cost a billion dollars a piece to build. All of that can be rolled back into the solar roadway system. Oh, yeah. Then you take into account all the electricity you're going to generate. Now you can start that 10,000 and start climbing up, and you're still going to break even. You won't get the full gist of this thing until you're driving tomorrow or the next day. Then you're going to start emailing me questions. Is the way it usually works. Because you're like, hey, what happens if we do this? Or, and 
people, it snowballs. People come up with more ideas and. So I worry about hacking the roads. I mean, because if I was a hacker and you could hack the entire nation's roads, that would be a, a huge incentive. I would have a field day with that. Yeah. I would try every day of my life to try to hack the roads. You really are a hacker, aren't you? No, I'm not. Mm. Mark I'm just a hacker for good. Mark's totally invisible right now, actually, like in the dark, in the dark reaches of the car. 